Hi folks, my name's Brian and you guys are watching The Hearing Club. Welcome. So today's an exciting day. You guys get to learn how to read an audiogram. The audiogram is basically the results of your hearing test and it's gonna show you which frequencies or which pitches of sound you can hear well, which sounds you're having trouble with, and it's gonna give you a visual representation of your hearing loss. You get to see whether you are having more trouble with your left ear or your right ear, or maybe both ears are about the same. So today we're gonna to show you in layman's terms, very easy to understand how to read this, what it means, and kind of learn what kind of hearing loss you have, if any. Now, before we can do that, we've gotta understand what the heck are all these numbers? So the numbers on the top row are all the different frequencies or the different pitches of sound. The lower the number, the lower the frequency or the lower the pitch. And I'm going to play some examples of all these different frequencies. And we're going to call these frequencies going forward. But these are also called pure tones. And again, the reason we use these very specific frequencies is because these are all the different frequencies found in speech. And these frequencies are measured in hertz. So you have 250 hertz, which is the lowest frequency that we test, which is a very low pitch sound, all the way up to the very highest frequency or the highest pitch sound, 8,000 hertz. And then on the left side of the audiogram, the vertical axis, you have the intensity or the volume, if you will. And this is measured in decibels. Now, one important thing to note is zero is just the audiometric zero or perfect hearing. So as you can see here, as we go down the audiogram, the sound or the intensity gets louder and louder and louder. So if your scores are all up here, you have exceptional hearing. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. This 250 up at the top sounds kind of like this. And then the 500 hertz tone sounds like this. And then 1000 sounds like this. And 2000 sounds like this. And then so on and so forth, all the way to 8000 hertz. And that is usually the highest frequency that we will test. So we will go through 250 all the way to 8000. And I'll just give you a quick example of what 8000 sounds like. Now the whole point of this test is to find out how well you can hear each one of these different frequencies or each one of these tones. A person with good hearing can hear these sounds at a very low volume, but the opposite would be true of somebody that has hearing loss. They have to have the volume much higher before they can hear these different sounds. Now on an audiogram, the left ear is represented by the blue X's and the right ear is represented by the red circles. Now the nice thing about using X's and circles is if there's no color, you can still tell which ear is left and which ear is right. Because if this was just black ink or black and white, you could still see the X's for the left ear and the circles for the right ear. So I'm going to give you a quick, very primitive breakdown of how this test is performed just so you have an idea. So we're gonna sit you down in the soundproof booth and provide you some very simple instructions. So I'll tell you, ma'am or sir, you're gonna hear these different tones or these different beeping noises. And whenever you hear one of these sounds, I want you to press that button or raise your hand and let me know that you can hear the sound. And it's very important that even if the sound is very, very soft or very, very quiet, or you think you might hear that sound, then press that button. Those are the most important ones. When you could just barely hear that sound, I want you to press the button or raise your hand. So we're going to pretend we're testing your right ear and I'm going to play this 1000 Hertz sound at 40 decibels or 40 volume. And if the patient hears that sound, I'm going to put a red circle there at 1000 Hertz at 40 volume. And then after you hear that tone and you press the button, I'm going to then lower the volume and I'm going to play that same sound, that 1000 Hertz tone at 30 decibels. And if you hear that one too, I'm going to put a mark there. Then I'm going to keep dropping the volume until you no longer hear that sound. This is called the ascending descending method. 
So I'm going to play that same 1000 hertz sound at 20 decibels, even lower volume. And if you don't hear it, I'm going to raise the volume by 5 decibels and play it at 25 instead. And if you still don't hear that sound, I'm going to increase the volume again by another 5 decibels until you hear the sound again. And if you continually, three times, hear that sound at 30 decibels, that is where I'm going to leave my mark. That is your threshold for 1000 hertz. 30 decibels is the lowest volume that you can hear this 1000 hertz sound. And I'm going to do that for each and every frequency. So for example, we're still testing the right ear. Now we're on to the 2000 hertz sound. So I'm going to present that tone at 40 decibels. And if you don't hear it, I'm going to increase it by 10 decibels. And I'm then going to play it at 50 decibels. And let's pretend the patient hears it at 50 decibels. I'm going to put my mark there. Now, since you could hear it at 50 decibels, I'm then going to drop the volume down to 40 decibels. And if you don't hear it, I'm going to increase it again by five. And let's pretend you can hear it at 45 decibels. So I'm going to place my mark there. And I'm going to repeat this process until I get a response at the same volume three times. And if you keep hearing this 2000 Hertz sound at 45 decibels, then that's going to be your threshold for the 2000 Hertz sound. And we're going to do that for each and every frequency until we find out the lowest volume that you can hear each one of these frequencies. And it might look something like this. And then we're going to test the left ear and we're going to see how the left ear does. And let's just pretend your left ear is worse than the right ear. It might look something like this, because remember, the lower you are on the graph, the more hearing loss you have. So what this means is that this patient can hear much better with their right ear because they can hear all these sounds at a lower volume. They can hear these low tones at 30 decibels, and then they can hear these higher tones around 45 decibels and 50 and 60 decibels. But for the left ear, the volume has to be much louder. The patient doesn't hear these sounds until the volume's all the way up to 60 for these low tones and 80 and 85 decibels for the higher tones. So I would tell this patient, sir or madam, your right ear is much better than your left ear. As you can see here, you're hearing all these different sounds at a much lower volume than you can hear with your left ear. So first, we're gonna take a look at the different severity levels of hearing loss. Now what this image shows is the different severity levels. So anything between zero and 20 decibels is considered normal hearing. And once you get into the 20 to 40 range, you have mild hearing loss. Now this is a generalization, you know, because you can have normal hearing in the low tones, and then you can have some severe hearing in the higher tones or the higher frequencies. So zero to 20 is normal, 20 to 40 is considered mild hearing loss, 40 to 70 is considered moderate, 70 to 90 is considered severe hearing loss, and then anything under 90 is considered profound hearing loss, and you are in some serious trouble with regards to your hearing. Now with this specific hearing loss for the patient's right ear, I would say sir or madam, you have some mild hearing loss in the lower frequencies from 250 to 1000 Hertz. And then as you start heading to the higher frequencies, you have a moderate, just touching the severe side of the hearing loss. Now we're going to talk about why these different frequencies are so darn important. And this is my favorite part of the test. When we get to this part where I explain why it's important to hear these certain frequencies, I just have so much fun and it really, really opens up your eyes and helps you understand why you're having trouble with certain sounds, with certain words and hearing certain things. So this yellow part is called the speech banana. And this is kind of where, or this is where the letters fall in to this frequency spectrum, if you will. Something that a lot of folks don't know is that your vowels are considered lower frequency or lower pitch sounds like A, E, I, O, U, you know, your vowels. And the consonants or some of the consonants are considered high frequency sounds. And why is this important? Because if you are missing or getting mixed up or don't hear as well, the sounds that the letter F makes and the S, hissing noise sound and the th 
if you can't hear those sounds very well, you're going to be mixing up a lot of words and having a real hard time understanding what people are saying. Usually the issue is this. Before I took my state exam, before I became an apprentice hearing aid fitter, and before I became a fully licensed hearing aid fitter, guess what I did for a living? I was a telemarketer for hearing aids. I've been doing this a long time. And when I would call somebody and try to get them in our office for a hearing test, I would have to say this, hey, my name's Brian. Would you say that you can hear okay, but sometimes have difficulty understanding words clearly. And folks, that's what it's all about. You can hear okay, you can hear people talking, you can hear the music playing, you just have a hard time understanding what the people are saying. And that's because of all this right here. You don't have a problem hearing, you have a hard time understanding what's being said. And a lot of people just don't understand that. So what this graph means is, now this is the same thing that I was just showing you before. This is an audiogram. You have your frequencies up on top and then you have your decibel levels on the side. So what this means is the sounds of these letters, F, S, T, H, these sounds are higher frequency sounds. How do we know that? Because they're on this side of the audiogram between 4,000 and 8,000. Remember when we were playing those different beeping noises, those different pier tones, and I played the 8,000 hertz sound and it was that really high pitch sound? Some of you may not even have heard that sound. These letters, F, S, and TH, these sounds are in that same area. They are high pitch sounds. And if your scores, your pier tone thresholds, like your right and your left ear, if your red circles and blue Xs are underneath this area, let's say in the 40 or 50 decibel range, then you are having a real hard time understanding or hearing these sounds. If your thresholds, if your red circles and blue X's are above these letters, then that means you have no problem hearing those sounds. Now, a perfect example of this happening is this patient right here, their right ear. Their 4,000 and 8,000 thresholds are down at 45, 55, and 60. But the letters F, S, and TH are all the way up here at 20. So they're up here. And since these letters are in this area at 20 decibels, but the patient doesn't hear those sounds unless they're at this decibel level, they're not able to hear these. So for example, if you're eating dinner with your loved ones and somebody says, hey, can you pass that dish? You might come back with, well, we don't have any fish because you are having a difficult time distinguishing your F sounds and your D sounds because the F, the S, and the TH are up here and you're way down here. Now, if your scores are above these letters, like this patient right here, he can hear 250 hertz at 30 decibels and these letters j m d b and these vowels e and u are down here in the 40 to 50 range well this patient can hear those letters better because his scores are above the 40 to 50 range they are all the way up here at 30. so again any letters that are below your scores you can hear or you can hear easier but any letters that are above your scores, you're gonna have a hard time hearing. And this picture gives you an idea of what sounds are at what levels and what frequencies. So this patient would have a very hard time hearing birds chirping because the scores are far below 10 decibels, which is where this bird is. And you can go ahead and pause the video and you know take a picture of this so that you can see well that's why i'm having a hard time hearing the birds in the morning because to in order for me to hear the birds i would have to be able to hear these 6000 hertz sounds at 10 decibels but for me to hear 6000 hertz i have to have the volume or the decibel level at 55 but the birds are only singing at 10 decibels now let's take a look at the vacuum would this patient be able to hear the vacuum running? 
Absolutely, because the vacuum is a loud noise. In fact, the vacuum is right around 60 decibels and the pitch in sound of the vacuum is right there at 3000 Hertz. So in order to have no problem hearing the vacuum running, the patient would need to be able to hear 3000 Hertz at 60 decibels. And our patient can hear 3000 Hertz at 45 decibels. So they have plenty of room. Their scores are above where the vacuum is on the audiogram. Now, I hope this has all helped you understand what's going on with your hearing, why certain frequencies are so important, and you know, how to read an audiogram. Now, this is a very, very basic explanation. We have not gone over your bone conduction scores, masking, your UCLs, your MCLs. There's a lot more to the audiogram. I'm just trying to give you a very basic understanding of what's going on. Now, a couple of things that we're going to go over in some of the future videos that are going to be coming right up is the difference between a basic amplifier type hearing aid that you can get online and a programmable hearing aid that is tailored and customized to fit your hearing loss and how they are vastly different and how one is much more superior than the other. And then we're also gonna be coming out with the video showing you the new over-the-counter hearing aids and the difference between the cheaper over-the-counter hearing aids that are not programmable and not customized for your hearing loss and the more advanced, more expensive over-the-counter hearing aids that are programmable. And we're also going to be showing you how to do your own online hearing test. Now, I'm not talking about one of those cheesy hearing tests where you just answer a couple questions and it tells you, oh yeah, you have hearing loss. Click here to get an appointment and spend three, four, five, eight thousand dollars on hearing aids. No, there's actually a website that you can go to. It's very, very simple and you can actually get an audiogram of your hearing loss, just like the one that I showed you, not some cheesy little quick, you know, hearing test that tells you to set an appointment. This hearing test will actually show you your audiogram. And I'm going to walk you through step by step how to do that in the comfort of your own home, as long as you have some headphones and a nice quiet area. So if you want to see those videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit that like button and click on that little bell icon so that you get notified when new hearing club videos come out. Thank you so much for watching the video. And if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment and we're going to start answering the viewers comments in our future videos. So your question might be one of the lucky ones that gets answered and featured in one of our videos. You guys all have a wonderful day and I will catch you in the next video. Let's get hearing.